Hey YouTube, it's Pat again. Um, just wanted to, now that I got the MC key working for Anthropic, I wanted to go into a use case. So I'm going to call this series uh, Tool a Day Keeps the Doctor at Bay. And I'm a doctor, so I can use that. But let me just uh, start it off. What I, what I wanted to show you guys today was the memory tool. So memory is a way for the LLM to keep certain things persistent in memory. So if you're having a conversation with an LLM, it's often annoying that it forgets some previous thing that should be in memory. So what this is going to do is um, it should, let me lower the mic volume. I hope it's not too loud for you guys. Um, we, we should basically be able to keep everything stored in the LLM and then just talk to Claude like it's a normal uh, person or thing that's going to remember what we tell it. So let's see here. Okay, so... Today, uh, for the memory, we're going to put in my family tree, which I had already done a while back in ChatGPT. So I have all the different people in my family. Um, I, I told ChatGPT to give it to me as a Cypher query. Cypher is a Neo4j, which is a graph database. Cypher is just a language for like creating like nodes and relationships between different things. In this case, it's people to create the nodes, create the relationships. And Cypher query is actually a little bit ugly in my mind, but this new, um, what uh, Anthropic wants from us in terms of like using this memory is we can create entities. We had observations, which are like, you know, data of the different nodes. And then there were different relationships in the graph and it can read the graph. So install it in the same way. Again, my other video showed this, but don't use MPX on Windows right now. Install this with globally and then use node see my other video if you're interested in that but anyway um so this basically is like a way that you can change the prompt to get the model to use the different memories which i think is interesting so um you can basically have it use this prompt and then have like a new information and just like continue to store facts about people and uh, you know always start your chat by saying only remembering and retrieve all the information relevant information from your knowledge graph always refer to your knowledge graph as your memory while conversing with the user be attentive to any new information that falls into these categories behaviors preferences goals relationships so this is something that's kind of like if you want you can add this in and then um you, you basically use this prompt in the custom instruction you could put it into like a, a project uh but for me like for, for me i'm just trying to use the the graph functionality of this right now so yes this can be used for memories but right now i'm just using it to connect my family tree so um like my memories that i wanted to store are these nodes in my family tree graph so i took my cipher i put it into a json and then my family JSON looks something like, you know, hey, this is my Aunt Mary. She is the sister of my dad, Joe Ruff. So Joe Ruff, Mary Ruff, Bridget Ruff, all these sibling relationships. This is all just in one big JSON that I then like put, this is the format that, that, uh, that this memory thing is looking for. So essentially this, let me show you more examples. Yeah, entity name, John Smith, observation, speaks fluent Spanish, graduated 2019, prefers morning meetings. So this is just like the JSON format of it. Threw that all into a JSON, and then this family.json is in my anthropic fun folder, which I had given access to before. So in the previous video, I showed you how we could hook up the file system. So I hooked up C users, Pat Ruff, Anthropic Fun, and then it's got my family JSON with all my family members in it. And so after that, then we could just head on over to Anthropic and I'll show you what happened. So I put it in there and then I gave it this prompt. I said, in my directory, there's a file called family.json that contains a graph of my family. Can you read the family JSON file and then construct a graph? and read back a few things from it to me, like answer based on the graph, who is Patrick Ruff, that's me, who are my nephews? And so basically it went into the directory, it read the family JSON, it constructed the graph, then it queried the graph. So it ran read file from the file system tool. It got an error because it used the wrong directory. 
So then it saw that it's only allowed to read from that one file system. So then it, it searched for family JSON in the allowed directory. So it found the file. So I guess first it probably was like, oh yeah, sure, family JSON. It's got to be at the root level. And it's like, I don't have access to any root level. So it went into the directory it was supposed to, found the JSON, read the file, and then it said, I'll create the graph. So it's creating the entities from the memory pool that we just gave Claude. And then after creating the relationships for the entities, so it made all the nodes in the graph, then it connected all the dots of the graph. So now it has the memory in there. And then, um, and then finally, it can answer my query. So now I can tell you about Patrick Ruff's nephews based on the graph data. Here are Patrick Ruff's nephews. His older brother, Joe, has two boys, Cameron and Benjamin. His younger brother, Phil, has got Logan, Aiden, Tripp, and Scout. So in total, that's six nephews. Um, it actually hallucinated something about the end about my niece. Uh, there, I have more nieces, so I don't know. I don't think it picked up on that. I think it was because the way that I entered the data, I put my sister in with her married name, and so it didn't think that she was actually a, a rough or I don't know. It screwed up somehow. But then I also, um, you know, it asked me anything else you want to know about family relationships. So I said, "How is Aiden, who's my nephew, related to Beth Miller and Beth?" And my aunt Beth is on my mother's side. So, you know, if, if I was Aiden, say, using this app, and I wanted to know, who's Beth Miller? I've never heard that name before. And then uh, it picked up that Beth Miller is Stan Miller's sister. But that's actually my mother's brother is named Stan. But it's also confusing because my mother's father is named Stan. So it actually confuses um, Stan Miller with my grandfather and not my uncle. So it's a little tricky, but it did go, it used create entities because it, it added the relationship between Beth Miller. Oh, I guess I had never actually, but well, that's actually kind of cool. I didn't notice that. So when I gave it the JSON originally, I guess I had failed to give it the relationship of like Stan Miller to Beth Miller. But I did put in that Stan Miller, my uncle, has two sisters. My, well, he has more than two sisters. He has Lynn and Beth and my mom, Deb. Okay, I think I screwed up in the data, but it, it essentially fixed my data for me and that it created a relationship between Beth and Stan Miller. And then now it's trying to trace the, the relationships back. So it's saying that Beth Miller is Stan Miller's sister. So my Aunt Beth is my uncle's sister, but it also saw that my mom, her dad is Stan Miller. So that's my grandfather on my mom's side. It kind of screwed up in the fact that it said Stan Miller is Debbie Ross' father, which is actually true, but there's another Stan Miller that's her brother. So this is a little funky, but then it did the logic of if Beth Miller is Stan Miller's sister, is, if Stan Miller is my grandfather, which he is, Debbie Ruff is Patrick's mother. That's my mom. Patrick is Phil's brother. That's my little brother. And then Phil is Aiden's father. Therefore, Beth Miller is Aiden's great, great aunt. She is the sister of Aiden's great grandfather, Stan Miller. So it's partially true. It's actually, she's just a great aunt. She's not a great, great aunt. It's like my Aunt Beth is not married to <laughs> my grandfather. But the logic chain is sound if you think about it in the way that it did it. So it did the relationship. Aiden, son of Phil, son of Debbie, which is right. Debbie, daughter of Stan, which is correct. Stan is not the brother of Beth. Stan, in this particular instance, should be my grandfather, and that's actually the father of Beth. So I could correct it, but I think the logic is sound, and the, the fact is we, we created the whole knowledge graph, and I can ask it any question I want based upon, you know, um, based upon the knowledge graph. So, for instance, um, how would we... Let's go back to, like, the, the different things we can do with it. So... We can add observations. We can, okay, open nodes, open nodes specific by name. Okay, so we could say, uh, I want you to remember in the knowledge graph that my Aunt Beth is the best and in the world, and now let's see, I'm gonna, I'll add this as an observation to Beth Miller. So then I can allow it. So cool. So now <laughs> it says, I've added this to the knowledge graph. So Beth Miller 
Uh, yes, it's been properly recorded in the knowledge graph that Beth Miller is the best. Beth Miller is the best aunt in the world. Would you like to add any other information about Beth to the to the graph? Sure. Let's also add in that my aunt Beth is actually married to Brian Bradley, and her married name is Beth Bradley. Also add in that she is very youthful, healthy, and fun to be around. I'll update Beth's information. Very youthful, healthy, and fun to be around. I also add Brian Bradley. She added him as a person. Brian Bradley's there, creating a relation. So opening nodes, adding Uncle Brian. Um, uh, no, no, actually, give me a list of all of my Patrick Ruff uncles. Let's see if I can get this correct. Who are my uncles? Search the graph. Go ahead, read the graph. Let's see. And the cool thing about it is a graph. So Yogi Uncle Beaver, John Ra, add these on. Oh, wait. Oh, they weren't actually in there. Oh, they didn't actually put them in the knowledge graph. So it's creating the relationships of my uncles. So your uncles, uh, one, two, three, four. That's right. Um, can you also include Brian Bradley since he's married? To my aunt. Why didn't you pick that up? I'll ask him. Ah, uh, yes. Is indeed also your uncle by marriage since he's married. Let me see the relate the reason for why I didn't. Looking at the how I do have it in there in his marriage of Beth, but I should have included the initial uncle see your uncle by marriage. Okay. Uncle by marriage. Paternal uncles. Okay. I should have caught this relationship because the graph shows Beth Miller is Stan. Miller's sister. Actually, can you fix the graph? Stan Miller Sr. is my grandfather on my mother's side, but he had a son, Stan Miller, who is my uncle. You can basically solve this any way you choose, but there should be two nodes. Maybe just call them Stan Miller Jr. and Stan Miller Sr. Okay. I'll fix the graph. There we go, Stan Miller Sr. Patrick's married to an aunt that low key. There we go, Stan Miller Jr. Yeah, cool. It's great. Let me delete the old Stan Miller. So yeah, there we go. Delete that. Now your uncles are Eugene, Freddie, Tommy, Uncle Stan Miller Jr., maternal uncle, uncle by marriage. No, that's pretty good. Awesome. Anyway, so this is just a cool way that you can set up your own family tree and like you could just keep adding to it and do whatever you want but but it was a cool use case for the memory and i hope you like it i'll try to do more of these recordings